Hello guys. In last class you have learned history of programming. So before getting into programming, we should learn about basics of embedded system. So today we are going to learn about embedded system, microcontrollers and processors, Arduino board etc. matter where you go what you do an embedded system is helping you serving you protecting you embedded systems are computer components which interface with and control mechanical and electrical systems they often rely on sensors like airbag in a car or a human interface to perform a specific task unlike a general purpose computers which perform multiple tasks Embedded systems are designed to do a specific task. They can be large enough to run a factory assembly line and also small enough to fit in your watch. It can be found on the every industry on the planet. Let's see a few examples of embedded system. You can see it in finance, defense, home appliances, electronics, automotive, business and also in medical fields. In computers we use microprocessor but in embedded system we use microcontrollers instead of microprocessors microprocessors and microcontrollers are visually almost identical but are different in many aspects they are different in terms of applications in which they are used cost processing power and also power consumption is different let's see the difference in terms of application Classic example of microprocessor is a PC or laptop. Microprocessor are basically used in applications where tasks is not predefined. It depends upon the user or it is used in applications where the intensive processing is required like gaming, web browsing, photo editing, creating documents, mathematical calculations and simulations etc. While in case of microcontroller they used for a specific task. based on input which are given to the microcontroller it do some processing then it gives some result as an output most modern microcontrollers contain three key components first one is processor core which acts as the brain of the microcontroller second one is the program memory which contains instructions that tells the memory what to do third one and the final one is input and output for processing external data embedded system is the base of robotics we know that we humans process we our brain we use legs and hands to enable our motion and we use our sense organs like eyes ears etc to sense likewise robots uses their microcontrollers to process the information and actuators like motors solenoid etc are used for its motion It uses sensors like IR sensor, light sensor for sensing the surrounding. Now we are going to study about one of those embedded system called Arduino. Actually, Arduino is a company that produces microcontroller boards. They have different versions. The most commonly used is the Arduino Uno. They also have more compact versions like Arduino Mini and bigger versions that can handle more sensors like Arduino Mega. The main difference is the size capacity and number of pins between these boards. Uno has 14 digital pins and 6 analog pins. Mega has 54 digital pins and 6 analog pins. This means we can connect 20 different sensors and devices to Arduino Uno and 70 to the Arduino Mega. Not that Arduino does not produce microcontrollers. They produce microcontroller boards that contain microcontroller. So what so special about these Arduino boards? Even though when refer to Arduino the hardware comes to our mind, but the speciality of Arduino is in its software. It makes the process of programming much easier than any other similar device. In earlier times we used to write terms of lines of codes just to turn on an LED. But now with Arduino we can achieve the same result in just three simple lines of code. so we can say it is a high level language that takes care of the coding defects for us so that we can focus more on the actual projects 
So how does the Arduino work? As mentioned, the Arduino has its own software through which we can program different sensors and devices and we can upload it to the Arduino board. We can use regular USB connection to upload the code using a computer. Once the code is uploaded, it keeps running as long as it keeps getting the power. So let's have a closer look at the most commonly used Arduino, the Arduino Uno. The main component is the MCU that handles all the logic. Then we have the USB connection to upload the program to the board. We also have a power jack that allows external battery to be connected to make it portable. There is a button that resets the code without deleting it. Then we have the pins where we attach our components. We have 14 digital pins, 6 analog pins and we also have power pins with 5 volts and ground. So let's learn about digital pins and analog pins in Arduino Uno. Digital signal has only two states which means it can be on or off. Whereas analog signal has a range of states. Let's look at an example of a fan. If we control the fan digitally, we have the option of turning it on and turning it off where on would mean 1 and off would mean 0. If we control the fan with analog signal, this would mean we have a range of values. Therefore, we can now control the speed of fan rather than just on and off. For example, the range is from 0 to 255. 0 would mean off, 255 would mean full speed, where 127 would mean half the speed. Now consider an example of embedded system. Consider an application using light sensor. The light should be on during the night time and should be off during the daytime. We have an analog input in the form of light sensor and analog output in the form of light. The light sensor is the sensor we use for that. We will give the value of the sensor analog output to the controller. Now the controller will decide according to its output when the light should be on or off. So the light here is controlled by the controller. In next video, we will look into the details of how different sensors could be connected to Arduino and how to code them. So we will meet again in next session with another Tinkercad project. Till then, bye!